Hey everybody, Stephen here. I am at Hay Creek, so Hay Creek unit of the Richard J. Doerr State Forest. I'm at the Stone House Loop. So this is in Hay Creek, Minnesota. I uh, have actually fill, uh, plotted out the loop on Gaia and it's right about two miles. So the total loop is going to be about two miles. So I am going to go ahead and hike this loop. I got some people coming behind me, so I'm going to go ahead and Sounds start. All right, here's the structure of an old building. Some kind of a part of a farm or homestead. And you'll find those types of things kind of throughout the world <laughs> just kind of throughout this area down here so there's a lot in these state forests of uh, remnants of old homesteads and stuff like that so uh, there's actually it's a little hard to see here but there's huge structure here and I've actually never noticed this one before so goes out that way comes across a whole bunch of stuff in here a bunch of the rocks could have been a barn another old antique stove oh, I hear people shooting out there it might be turkey season somebody left their hat and yeah earmuffs kind of clearing there that'd be a pretty good spot to camp so you can camp in these forests dispersed camp though, this is my uh, favorite kind of forest pine forests this one uh unfortunately still does have quite a lot of undergrowth uh invasive undergrowth i feel these pine Maybe it's a, the species of the pine trees here. Uh, the type might be a little too big and a little, a little too spread out for the needles to be able to eliminate that. But this is not the trail, but let's let's check this out because I I feel that a lot of this area would really be great for dispersed camping. Oh. All right, we're coming up on something here, so let's check this out. So this is, I believe, potentially part of that homestead. All right, so definitely building there of some sort this all collapsed at some point that's gonna completely fall down i don't know how long in this area don't know how long they've been doing that style of structure so to my eyes doesn't seem that old that part of the structure at least Maybe it was added on, you know, the, all the stonework in there definitely looks old, but the, that stuff is like poured concrete. So don't know. I don't know. There it is. All right, the trail does wrap around to it, but we're uh, gonna go up here first. All right, we do have horse hitches over here. So 
that tells me that perhaps they do let horses uh, come here. At least they did at some point. So we're going to dip back there in a little bit and look at that. This here, interesting spot way at the end. So that right at the edge there, that could be a, a camping spot. And it looks like most of the overgrowth is not existent over there. So maybe come back sometime and go camping there once this is all over. So quarantine and hunting season. <laughs> all right, so. We've got, ow, thorny. Got an old staircase right there, wooden. And these, not sure what exactly these are. Parts of perhaps this building here. And in the back, Ah, there's a bunch of junk under there because you should dispose of your garbage in historical areas. That's just kind of what you should do. That's what I do. Um, and then this, not sure exactly what this was. The bench. It looks like there might have been a second floor up there. Maybe it was their sauna, who knows. We got a old kind of picnic table there. One like this one. This one is ruined. So not sure how that one got ruined, but looks like this one has replaced it. Let's see here, is it chained down? No. So I'm not sure if somebody took it from somewhere and brought it up here. Not entirely sure. And then we have fire pit. Very cool. This is a really neat spot to hang out in. Super cool. Sounds like we have a dove off on, off in the background or an owl. And then I'm just going to look around here a little bit to see because it is open if I spot any other remnants of this, which I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking a ton, but I'm not seeing anything over there. There there certainly could be though. All right. So in all its majesty, the stone house. Looks like some people have walked over there, so I might walk around there. So cool. It's big. It's really big. Oh, there's a big bird flying there too, a turkey vulture. We're gonna check this out here. <clears throat> Franz and Metacord's homestead. Franz and Metacord's and three daughters arrived in New York City from Germany in 1865. After making their way to Minnesota, they settled in Hay Creek before building the homestead 1875. Looks like somebody passed away. State DNR acquired the property in 1965. There's a picture of it. How cool with this pine pine forest surrounding you. Farm fields over there. I'm not sure, you know, if those farm fields were present at the time that this house was there. And people have uh, come through and kind of uh, helped to clear this stuff out occasionally. So we're just going to kind of look here, not jump up too crazy. Got some separation down there. It looks like we've got, don't worry, I'm just stepping on cut down trees here. Thorny cut down trees. Yeah, there's some stuff down there. Really neat. 
So yeah, that's a stone house. Might walk around here a little bit. That's what the window seals look like. Oh, and check out where they set all the pieces of wood and the stone up there. And the roundish window up there. Really cool. Super cool. History is cool. <laughs> So there, it looks like there's another little, little tiny piece of their life over here too. Once again, I don't, I do not know much about any of this stuff. So let's take a look here though. So we have this. I... I'm guessing this is a well. That's my guess. Yeah, kind of cool. It's got these neat cut out things on the side. So I'm not sure if there was a hinge on this or hinged lid. Eh, I'm not seeing anything else right away. old bucket over there. Oh, here we go. This is something that you want to see during the summertime. But since it's spring, ah, check this out. Yeah. I would guess that they were probably farmers. Cool. Old, old implement there, old farm equipment. It's a little beat up, but it's still there. The only surface rust you can see how long it's been here though. This dead tree, which I hope doesn't fall on me because it's very big. So this dead tree, has grown around it, grew around it for a long time. I wonder if that ultimately killed the tree. Hard to say. That's pretty neat though. Shows you the age, so. It's, they let that sit there a long time ago and my, uh, my best guess would be it was probably a long time before 1965 or whatever it was. We actually have uh, over by this bucket I don't want to climb through all those thorns, but we have a wall structure. Wall structure, all grown over with moss. So there was something else there. And then now I'm seeing another piece of a different wall. So there's a, this one might be hard to see, but there's wall right there goes over that way so there there definitely was a building there and another metal bucket out there all right so back to my vehicle let's see here boom there we go Kind of hard to focus there, but we're at, yeah, it doesn't show now. It was two miles total, so let's finish it and see. Boom. All right. 2.15 miles. I was out there for an hour, 290 foot, 95 foot ascent, but yeah, using Gaia GPS, 
I should talk about that for a moment. Guy is the best. So I've used a lot of apps. I used to use Gaia on Android and for a while it just was having a lot of issues before they kind of revamped the whole program. So for a while I jumped over to all trails. I did actually a superior hiking trail uh, hike three days where I offline navigated and mapped it all on all trails and it worked fine. And but there's just a, a lot of functionality on that particular app that I don't like. I don't like the main map on it or any of the maps that are on it. And so then I went to Locust for a while. I liked Locust. It was pretty good, but I, I had a few just weird issues. It is very customizable in terms of the user interf interface, but it just, I don't like this, the way that they do the program. You have to repurchase maps and they're quite expensive and it's cheaper up front, but then it gets more expensive as it goes on. And I just found a few things lacking in it. A few search functions not working right and stuff. Jumped to CalTopo Beta for a while. CalTopo is interesting. The maps that come with it are great. It just lacks some of the polish, some of the search features, just some of the 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 shine and polish and features that Gaia has. Now, re-downloaded Gaia, the newer version. It's brilliant. It's really good. It's easy to set courses. You can go out and just ping, 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 hit a few pins on it from, you know, if you're doing a loop, you might do one pin, you know, a third of the way, a third of the way, and then a third of the way, it'll, it'll totally map it out the rest of the way for you. So easy to map out hikes, uh, offline downloads are easy to do a plethora of different styles of maps that you can use if you do the pro membership. So it's really good. And what I do really love, one of the things that I've found recently that I really dig about it is the public land use maps because I am down here in Southern Minnesota. We are down in the Richard J. Dorer area and there's just a ton of public use land down here. And a lot of it isn't marked, but it's cool because you can go to those places and you can hike, you can camp, you can do whatever you want to do in any of those public use state forest lands unless it's otherwise stated so so it's pretty neat to have that on Gaia but yeah Gaia I'll have to do a video of it sometime I really dig it um so this is the end of the hike two miles hope you all dig it try to cut out all the gibberish and this road here I'm gonna go up that road so that that road's pretty cool it's a neat kind of minimum maintenance road so I'm gonna drive that way and take the long way and then head back home so have a good one bye